Good morning, we're outside the XL Exhibition Centre in East London. The situation here is that a military truck, or a, a civilian flatbed truck carrying military equipment, has attempted to deliver that military equipment to the world's largest arms fair. So in the roads adjacent to us is the XL Exhibition Centre, where next week the DSCI arms fair will take place, selling weapons from UK companies to buyers from all around the world, including countries like Israel, countries like Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and many countries that attend the arms fair have a grave record of human rights, which the UK government recognises, but then facilitates and arranges arms fairs in order to sell them weapons. So there's a blockade happening at the eastern end of the XL Exhibition Centre, where this truck, attempting to deliver military equipment, has been stopped by peace activists who state war criminals are not welcome here, who state stop arming Israel, and they're concerned about the civilians that could be oppressed by the kit and equipment sold at DSCI next week. So apologies if I'm hard to hear, right behind me is a truck that's attempting to deliver military equipment into the DSCI arms fair. As the trucks approach the uh, roundabout to enter the XL Centre, they are stopped by peaceful activists. So we've got two trucks, both carrying heavy military equipment, both destined for sale in the world's largest arms fair, which is due to start next week, which will hopefully be uh, stopped. And if you need a reminder of why the arms sale can't go ahead, here are some of the faces of children, these children in Palestine, but it could equally be anywhere else in the world where UK manufactured weapons are sold for profit then off they go around the world interestingly this one in black is probably more for civilian operations rather than military you have to wonder what kind of world we get into where this kind of armour is required for civilian operations that is a sinister looking vehicle. I wonder which country this vehicle or ones like it will end up in. Probably wouldn't be accepted in the UK, but this is where these weapons start from. Destined for Qatar, perhaps. So grave concerns about human rights in Qatar, but if they need these weapons to carry out these human rights abuses, the place to come and get them is London. London's the hub of arms trading it hosts the world's largest arms fair starting next week hopefully it won't start next week hopefully we'll be able to prevent it from being set up what a privileged place we live in where we don't see police weapons like this on our streets people that do see these weapons they should know it's started in london so if you're interested in the problems that we're trying to highlight here there's a week of action all week we're at the eastern end of the xl center so to get here, you use the uh, Prince Regent DLR station. And from Prince Regent, it's literally a minute's walk. It's probably 100 metres or less to where we are. You can look out for the camp. Lots of flags uh, flying. So our intention is to disrupt the setup of the arms fair. So weapons like this can't be sold. And our method is to disrupt the flow of military equipment into the XL sensor. If you want to come down, if you want to play an active role, if you want to play an inactive role, if you want to come down and just have a, a chat and learn about it, you're more than welcome, you don't have to stand in the road. What we do need are people to come and support the cause. Today is around Israel. Israel is one of the main partners of the DSCI arms exhibition. Interestingly, not officially invited, but they're there as an exhibitor rather than a, a buyer. Um, but their marketing pitch is that these weapons are effectively field tested. And if you want to know how these weapons that they're trying to sell are field tested, then here's some of the faces that you can, uh, you can look at to find out. So, 